Hi Simon, thanks for the footage. Um, during this video, what I'm going to try and do is highlight the areas that you need to prioritise. Um, the drills that I discuss towards the end or advise you on towards the end will be drills that you're very familiar with anyway. Um, and as we start going through the priorities, you'll start to formulate your own list and ideas regarding drills that could help anyway. Um, so I'll just touch on a few. Uh, there's a lot of good things going on based on the session that we had a few months ago, so things are, are certainly moving in the right direction. Um, you mentioned, I just want to touch on this before getting into too much detail, because a lot of the areas that we're going to discuss <coughs> excuse me, will relate to the way this trail foot works. You mentioned about working on trying to bank the trail foot in. Um, the banking of the trail foot ideally should be, should be the subsequent effect of other things that you're doing in the golf swing. Now the reason I mention that is you can actually have the back foot banking in, um, sort of almost like artificially, um, so you can have the look or appearance that you want, but not the correct mechanics or correct sequencing um, that you would want. So there's a different, you know, it's not just a, a look, it should be the the subsequent effect of other things that you're doing which I'll go through now um, during this uh, during this session so a couple of key areas that I want to look at first of all we look down the line the trail leg is straightening now which is great because there wasn't any straightening going on when we first met up uh, the arms as you said do lift a little bit towards the end um, and I'm going to give you some detail in regards to how you can improve that uh, without necessarily worrying too much about your pressure point. Um, again, it's a sort of knock-on effect, so it's just adding detail to that first session. So down the line from P1 to P4, the trail leg should be straightening. That will vary from club to club. Um, you know, It's not going to do it as much with the wedge as it is with the driver, for obvious reasons. So the trail leg should be straightening. The lead leg should be flexing from P1. To P4. Now, in your case, I'm just going to ignore the reverse view. Sorry for a second. Just have that synced up by mistake. So, in your case, what happens is the trail leg is pretty much in full extension by P3. So, there's nothing really left to give. Um, and we can see this when we look at it from the reverse view. I'll come to that in a second. So, Really now, the only way you can get the club to the top of the swing is by sort of extending the spine a little bit more, but just adding that little bit of a lift. Now, the trail leg should extend, but it should extend incrementally from P1 to P4. So, just to put some numbers on it, let's say there's 25 degrees of flex in the leg at P1. We should lose maybe 6 degrees from P1 to P2 further six degrees from P2 to P3 and then a further six degrees from P3 to P4. Now obviously they're not definitive figures, they're just trying to give you a, a, a way of picturing that in your mind. We can see that your right leg is extending too much too soon. So whereas the extension or the change of flex of the knees and the rotation of the pelvis and the way that affects the shoulder tilt helps propel the butt of the club gradually from one to four you've got it all in there by three so the only real mechanism you've got now of completing your backswing is just engaging the arms a little bit more than you would want i'll get some model footage up alongside that a little bit later on but for now i'd like to see you straightening the trail leg a little bit more incrementally uh, i think a lot of that is is just allowing yourself to trust what you've been doing um continuously you know trying to straighten the leg is not the way forward for you it's the leg should straighten it should straighten because you're trying to keep the arms on the rib cage and propel the butt of the club further back which is what we worked on when you visited but if it does it too much too soon the only mechanism you've got to get to the top now is to lift and that's quite evident when you look at it from the reverse angle You'll see from one to three, the knees change in flex quite substantially. So the body's propelling the arms. 
once you get to three, you can see the arms have got a certain amount of travel. That's the yellow line. And if you watch the knees in relation to how far the arms then travel, you can see that there's very little going on with the lower body. And that last little bit of the backswing is predominantly done with your arms. So just a slightly more gradual loading of the knees from one to four would help eliminate the need to engage the arms quite as much from 3.2 to 4. So it's just a little bit of sequencing. A little bit of work with the cover underneath obviously would help, um, but as you're doing that and filming, pay attention to how the knees change flex gradually as opposed to suddenly from 1 to 3. So it's a gradual strain in the trail leg from P1 to P4, whilst the lead leg is gradually flexing forward from P1 to P4. So a little bit more incremental, not quite as much as soon. Uh, that's going to help you with your backswing a little bit. So we go on to the next area that I want to look at, and that's that trail knee. Um, and again, predominantly from down the line on this. The trail knee I've marked at P1 with the red line, and you can see from 1... to 5, to 6, to 6.5, to 7. That trail knee is over flexing. It's driving out towards the golf ball too much. Which is causing the pelvis, after it regains its forward bend, which is the orange line, it's causing the pelvis to level out without raising. can see as you come through now it's only well after impact that the level of the belt raises now again this is not ideal for what you're trying to get with that trail leg more importantly trail foot if I just run this through from the reverse view you'll see that as you come through the hit there's a lot of flex in the knees a lot of flex held in the lead knee, certainly a lot more flex held in the trail knee and the trail ankle. So there's a little bit too much thrusting towards the ball whilst rotating and not enough extension of the lower body from 5.56 through to 8. So again, I'll get some model swings up for you. And when we look at the model swings as a comparison, we'll be doing it predominantly from down the line because I think that's the more appropriate footage to be looking at. So P1 to P4, we've got a trail leg that straightens a little bit too much, a little bit too soon. From four to six, we've got a lead knee, that, a trail knee, should I say, that's driving towards the ball a little bit too fast for a little bit too long and a lower body that's not extending soon enough. So... The sequence we'll discuss um, from four to six and then from six to eight when we look at it from down the line alongside the model swings. And then in the through swing, you'll start to see a very different look as you come through in regards to the amount of flex in both knees and particularly the trail ankle. So I'm just going to get the model swings up for you now and we'll do a little bit of a comparison, give you some visual stimulus and then we can talk about the drills that you can use to implement these changes. Okay, so if we take a little time to compare what's going on with Aaron Badley on the left and yourself on the right, uh, first of all, you see a little bit of a difference in the posture. You see the eyes are down at the ball a little bit more, chin's down a little bit more. Uh, that's just one more little addition that you could maybe look at introducing. So they're getting rid of this tendency to have the chin maybe just a fraction too high. Um, almost like getting the feeling you're going to hold the head cover under the chin and then just release the head cover um, to bring to bring that posture um, into check a little bit. Uh, but that's a minor issue. I wouldn't worry too much about that. Just play around with it um, as and when you feel sort of it's appropriate to do so. Uh, certainly wouldn't be top of my priority list based on what we've discussed so far. But I thought I'd just throw that in there. Um, with the comparison going on as we've got it at the moment. So from P1 to P4, 
we talked about how rather than the trail leg straightening very abruptly early in the swing, then having nothing left to give for the completion of the swing, which introduces that little bit of a mechanism of lifting the arms. So you can see there, the body's doing very little. The arms are doing quite a lot. In the early part of the backswing, the body does a tremendous amount and then has nothing left to give. If you watch Aaron's case, everything's going to be more incremental throughout the backswing. You see the trail leg straightening, lead leg flexing, but not too much too soon. Still straightening and flexing. Still straightening and flexing. So you can see that it's a gradual straightening and I appreciate both postures are slightly different, but it's a gradual straightening and flexing throughout from P1 to P4. See that gap opening up there just at the end. So that lower body is continuously moving. The changing flex of the knees, the extension of the spine, the side bend, etc. are what's propelling the club and the hands back throughout the whole of the backswing. The accumulators are loading, but they aren't lifting off the torso. You can see the pressure point five maintained beautifully throughout the backswing, which you did talk about just losing it a little bit towards the top of the backswing. Having said that, that's much better than when we first met, so I have no real issue with it. We just want to start adding some detail to what we discussed in your visit. So a little bit more incremental change in a flex of the knees. Then we talked about what the pelvis should do. So in your case, the right knee drives hard towards the ball. You can see it passes that red line quite substantially and then stays flexed as you turn through. And as a result, the level of your pelvis is not raised through the hit. So you're not pushing up with the lower body enough from six through to nine. Now what you're going to see in Aaron's case is as he returns into his forward bend from four to five to 5.5, from 5.5 onwards you see the level of the belt start to start to change but also start to raise. Now as a result that trail knee doesn't drive out towards the golf ball anywhere near as much. You can see the trail knee returns into its flex. As it's rotating, he's now starting to push up and that trail leg starts to straighten. So there's a little bit too much bend in that trail side at this point. You can see even as the shaft exits, the level of the belt hasn't risen. As you can still see, there's quite a lot of flex as we saw in the rear view in the lead leg and still quite a lot of flex in the trail leg. In Aaron's case, you can see the level of the belt raising as he pushes up out the ground with both legs. And as the shaft becomes visible, lead leg's nice and straight, trail leg's nice and straight. Now that's gonna help you raise the butt of the club. It's gonna help you turn the corner down at the bottom. So it's not gonna have the swing propelled out to the right too much, which means you're gonna have to turn much less you're not going to feel the need to turn quite as hard through the ball and you can start to control the closure on the club face uh, looking at the ball flight that you get in or looking at the ball flight that you would get I would say because of your talent level you're going to hit the ball pretty much the way you think you're going to hit it which is a little bit of a push draw I think personally you'd be doing that looking at your movements at the minute a little bit more with the rolling of the club we can't quite pick that out on the footage because it's a little bit blurred uh, but because of the way the lower body's working, it's a good bet that you're going to have a club face that's just rolling a little bit to bring the club around the corner and to close the face to the path. In Aaron's case, his club face roll is going to be much less abrupt because he's pushing up out of the ground and using the raising of the handle to close the face to the path. The path is going to be under more control because the body's working in a better sequence. I'm just going to play this through a few times for you now and 
you start to appreciate how the banking of the trail foot is more to do with the sum of all the movements during the downswing. So as he returns to flexion, you can see at five, lead uh, trail foot's planted. If you break it down into the three movements, the rotation is going to spin the heel round. The extension is going to raise the heel and the slide is going to bank the heel in. So if something is done excessively, you're going to see it in the trail heel. Now as he starts to rotate while sliding and extending, you can see that no real sort of alarm bells are ringing. There's no one move dominating the affair. If he was to rotate and stay in flexion, you'd see this heel sort of popping up and spinning round, which is very much what we see with yours. As you approach the sort of end of your swing, you just see it popping up and spinning round. So too much flex for too long in the trail knee. Then you're trying to turn hard to prevent the swing being moved out to the right too much. But that's not going to bank the foot in an appropriate manner. So having that foot banking in is a great look. But it's nigh on impossible to achieve without sort of cheating, so to speak, if you don't control what that trail side's doing through the hip. So your sequence for the pelvis is back into its forward bend by P5.5. And then from 5.5 onwards, whilst the upper body is still returning into forward bend, the lower body is starting to extend. You see the level of the belt change from 5.5 to 6. So that's the extension kicking in. So you see the level of the belt there now is slightly different. And then as you push up out of the ground, you can see the trail knee doesn't drive towards the ball excessively. And the level of the belt. Is continuously raising through the hip. You see there upon exit. The level of the belt has risen. The pelvis is now more level. But it's also more rotated. And the trail foot is behaving in a much more appropriate manner. Now personally for now the drills that I would use. I would still use the cover under the arm. Um, whilst doing that you now want to start filming that. And looking at how... Having the arms on the chest for longer encourages a more incremental extension of the trail leg during the backswing. So you start piecing that sequencing together. I would start to use the bowler drill uh, or at least an adaptation of the bowler drill. Uh, you'll see guys, and if you want to video this, send them across, just let me know. And I'll do a quick demonstration for you and whiz the video across via WhatsApp. Um, but you want to be hitting some partial shots, maybe going back to about P3 through to about P9. So chest height to chest height. And as you're hitting the ball, you want to be drawing the trail foot back. Hit the ball, draw the trail foot back. So normal setup, and then pull the trail side back dynamically as you're swinging through. And what that's going to do is that's going to, that's the, the exact opposite of a player leveling the pelvis out too quick driving the trail leg towards the ball too fast and tucking the hips under too much too soon so that would be a good drill for you and then there's also another drill where you eliminate the backswing completely and you just try and hit these balls as far as you can which isn't going to be very far and again I can do a demonstration of this easily there are examples on my channel anyway um, but you eliminate the backswing so there is no accumulation of power uh, before trying to hit this ball. Now, when you're hitting the ball, the ball's not going to go very far, obviously. But every time you make this move, you try and make the ball go a little bit further. And what that means is the only source of power that you have, or uh, sources of power that you have, are the angles in your ankle, your knees, your pelvis, your chest. So you've got to push up out the ground and get a sensation of pushing up out the ground uh, to propel the ball forward um, at all. So you start to isolate the move that you're seeing her and demonstrate sort of through maybe 6.5 through to 9. You start to isolate that move. Pushing up whilst rotating. Allowing you to keep the arms straight, 
because there's been no loading of the accumulators during the backswing in this particular drill we're discussing. There's no need to sort of add any roll to the club on the way through. There's nothing to release. So it's a really good way of isolating that pushing up through the ball, um, which I know from my own experience, I think the concept of that for me early on was really easy to grasp, but I found it really difficult to feel that personally whilst hitting. And I found it quite difficult to get my students to do whilst coaching. So there are just various little drills that you could use to try and sort of accelerate your learning in these areas. Um, lots of good stuff going on, lots of improvements being made. Um, a lot of the stuff that we've just been talking about now uh, relates to sequencing and you need to be conditioning yourself to make these moves rather than consciously trying to make these moves all the time so the drills that you use the environment that you're practicing should be such that when you go out and play you can just go out and play free up your mind go play golf which is ideally where you want to be when your pro-am season starts hopefully in the not too distant future so like i say if you've got any questions about what we've just discussed uh, if you've got any drills that i've mentioned that you want me to video demonstrations of so that you can be clear in your mind of what you're working on feel free, just drop me a quick text after you watch the video and I'll get them across to you ASAP. Hope everything's well up there and like I say, hopefully it'll not be too long before we're back out on the golf course and regaining some sort of normality. Between now and then, keep safe and hope you and the family are well during these very strange times.